guys good morning it's 6 a.m and i'm gonna attempt to do a vlog for you attempt because i am very exhausted i don't have much lined up for me but i'm seeing that the sky is clear yesterday being at Igne Kukula here in Cape Town, I swear we were dying. Today I have applications to finish. There's three job applications that I've been invited to, as well as funding applications that I need to send before the end of tomorrow. So I'm going to make some progress on them. And I also have one cute little order to process so i'm gonna have to go to my supplier should i tell you guys about how i run my business as a student maybe i should but i've got uh, something that i actually want to share i had to get my notebook because i want to share what i learned yesterday i've been born again for over 18 years at this point but i realized that my spiritual progress is not where an 18 year old born again christian should be not that I should be a pastor or anything, but like there's a certain level of understanding of the Bible and the Holy Spirit I should be at that I'm not. Again, the Holy Spirit's calling me out. So I took it upon myself to pray for God to make the process of reading the Bible slightly more entertaining beyond preachy kind of verses. I recently started reading the Bible as if I'm reading articles. I know, I know. I'm Kelly Boxini and my neighbors will hear me if I start speaking out loud. So this is my notebook. These are notes that I made yesterday and I wanna read them for you guys, but I wanna show you how God can change a person's journey. So there was God. God made man. I don't know who that man was, guys. The Bible says God made man. And then after that, he made Adam. He made man and then he made Adam. I keep asking myself what happened to the man that god made first it seems like those men were insignificant to god but not as much because god created a place in eden that was so concentrated of god's presence that he chose to make adam and eve blind from the evil that was outside of it so i wonder what who was being evil outside because it was just animals and plants and I feel like it was this man. It doesn't say who that man is. It doesn't say who that man is. It doesn't say how many men come out of that guy. It doesn't say anything else about that guy. What we know is that it's also good and evil. So I ask myself, who is being evil? And you know there's good and evil because God creates Eden, a place that was so saturated with the presence of God that God had to make Adam and Eve blind from the good and the bad. He was like, you guys won't be able to tell good and bad. You will just live purely. Don't eat from that tree. In your world, yeah, figure it. Y'all should eat from the tree so that you can see the good and bad and be like your maker. A question, the first question when you know who is this man that God created and what good and bad existed when there was just animals. And then Eve eventually has three kids. Adam and Eve have a kid, Cain. Cain was a blunt farmer. Like he was a crops farmer and then abel was an animal livestock farmer and then seth came about 105 years later in adam's life cain offered crops to god i don't know why god wasn't pleased <laughs> to me i'm just like it was like woolworth's quality it was organic fruits why was god not pleased anyway he, god was pleased by animals and fat first generation livestock from um abel's abel's livestock plus fat that's what pleased god and cain didn't understand why this didn't please god so he was like my brother gave you the fruits of his labor why aren't you pleased with mine so he killed his brother because he was angry at god god cursed cain and it seems like everything else that came after cain was so cursed there was all these people cain gave birth to a generation of narcissistic self-absorbed egoistic if i can say but like a lineage with years later after a lineage god said i am going to start this adam lineage again let's give birth to seth lineage again is it doesn't say how long they lived but then, like I said, it says exactly how long they lived and how many kids they had and which kids became of significance to God's purpose on earth. And then he gave birth to Canaan, 
it's giving Kane. But anyway, Mahalia, Jared, Enoch. See, Abu Yagin Dabaga Enoch because the first Enoch was the one who had a city named after a whole city named after him. But then this Enoch walked with God so much that God took him. <laughs> God was like, you're too good for this earth. Let me take you. But we're going to read the book of Enoch still, just to analyze it. What I'm seeing here is that God had to redo the whole lineage, being another Adam, because the first time around, it came from Cain, someone who didn't please the Lord, first of all, and then killed the person whom the Lord was pleased by. And it's weird because the, the names of the people in Cain's lineage also appear under Seth, Eve's third child, Seth's lineage. But the first Enoch became a city. But the first Lamech had two wives. His ego was bruised very easily. And also, Jay, it was dependent on women. Why did he have two wives? And then Unoa is here with his three kids. That's when God said, I'm not pleased with how evil the world has become the the filth in people's hearts that was just like i'm destroying all of this for me that's crazy business that's scary then the story of noah happens and god wipes out everybody everything 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 and it starts over to me that just speaks to the fact that god will rewrite your story like pretty sure adam and eve were not pleased would see what became of their generation was just king and his messy family. Yeah. Seth would come and he would bring a restoration and and I think that's what they said about Seth was law was Keresha out. They spoke it upon him and that's exactly what happened. From him came fathers of many things. Came the will of God. I guess that's it. That's where I'm at right now in terms of reading the Bible in detail like i'm writing down i'm drawing i'm making drawings i'm making a whole map i want to see because there's a very big link between the new and the old testament and so many people signify so many things that we see in the new testament and i should be going to bible school for this but gabby is a guys and also when would i do it okay so yeah like i said plans for today i'm going to my supplier i wanted to go somewhere but my cousin says we should go on Thursday because it's going to be warmer then. Um, I just have to process an order. I'll go to my supplier and I've got those applications to process. And then that's it for the day. So you guys are going to come with me. Press, really press, really press. Uh -huh. <laughs> This car leaving. 
I hate customers asking me to go out of the way for them. I really, really, really hate it. But um, yeah, I'm at ShopRite and I want to get the Aramex bag. And I'm honestly, I'm not keen. Like, I'm not a fan of what he's asking me to do. But let us try and find parking anyway. This is a one way street. Let's try and find some parking. Ha! This. Nah, guys. Nah, this queue. Nah. Oh, my window is dirty, but please look at this queue. It's going to where I need to buy the Aramix bag. No way. Listen, Jay, I, mean, Jay, I hate the Aramex guys because I actually work 10 times more. Women is such an inconvenience. The process, the queues, looking for a store that has available Aramex bags, all of it, it makes me hate what I do. I don't think I'll allow my customer to, to, to use this option. And this one, I was just extending grace because they live far off from places that do deliver so grace i guess for some people but yeah the cost is always too much okay let's do the admin
G-Wagon. It's probably the sixth one I've seen since I moved here in January. Cape Town doesn't have a lot of G-Wagons. Joburg, on the other hand, Uzukolangoti, maybe there's fake versions. We're in Claremont, if you guys don't know Cape Town. The space. Thank you. Thank you. seed it's similar it's not chia seeds it's very similar it's ah oh, i lied it's this <laughs> it's this the whole um yeah is this the cheapest you guys have because i just want to try it out to see it is a smaller bag if it works for my guts so this is the same size, but it's twenty rand cheaper, and it's in the nice resealable bag as well. Sure. Yep. So by the nutritional section, by the health foods, you'll find it. The one is the cheapest range. This is the cheapest. It's a hundred rands, and then there's also this if you are fancy enough. It has soluble fiber and. Oh, I should have bought this. It has um. Soluble fiber. And it's very high in fiber. If you are struggling with digestion, you need to get this. Going to clicks. Got my husk. I love 
with the small portions like it just makes sense. I'm a putama one or sata, so as it's giving cholesterol, that it is reinforcing us to buy like, large size muffins. I was like, I'm a putama one, so I'll just buy these. Let's go to Access Park. <laughs> 